Louis Monero from the International Academy of Consciousness, or IAC, spoke to the South Bay chapter of the International Association for Near Death Studies recently. The IAC is a nonprofit organization committed to the investigation of consciousness and its capacity to manifest outside of the physical body. Today, academics, scientists, and just ordinary people are increasingly interested in the hard problem in science. That is, how can something as immaterial as consciousness ever arise from something as unconscious as matter? Phenomena such as the near-death experience and the out-of-body experience may provide clues to the hard problem. In this three-part series, Lewis talks about the similarities and differences between the near-death experience and the out-of-body experience, and their relevance for people living today. Hello. Yes. Well, good, good evening, first of all. Thank you so much for the invitation. Close. Yeah, you can, you can hear me, not too close, I hope. So, um, first of all, let me, again, uh, be very explicit and thank everybody for the opportunity. You know, just like IANS, the IAC, we are also volunteer-based, and all the work all over the world that we do is also done by volunteers. So we appreciate the effort, and we know what you know what goes you know on the background to be able to set up all of these conferences and be able to give this information you know to to people who are interested. Of course, my name is Luis Minero, as uh, John was mentioning. I'm one of the instructors of the IAC in California, and really we are many all over the world. So let me let me maybe begin by this. I, you know, just looking around, I recognize maybe a few faces that I know I have seen maybe at other lectures and things, so welcome, you know, but I know most of you are here for the first time, or at least are having their first contact with the ISC for the first time. So let me start with the right foot and try to give you a good introduction of who we are and of all of this information, you know, that we have uh, managed to compile, yeah? So let me first of all begin by that. The IAC, we are a non-profit institution of research and of education. More than anything on the topics of out-of-body experiences, near-death experiences, vital energies, consciousness evolution, consciousness development, etc., etc., etc. We have already been giving classes all over the world in you know, many cities, sometimes I joke here and I say that if you can read the cities on this screen here, you probably already have clairvoyance. <laughs> I don't know who in the home office picks these colors. By the way, I cannot read it even up close. So if you can do it, that's excellent. But just to, you know, going by my memory, I guess, and not straining my eyes, uh, here in, uh, in the U.S., we give permanent classes in Los Angeles, also in New York and in Miami. In Europe, this is the case of Madrid, London, um, Portugal, also in Australia, in Brazil, etc., etc. And these are really the places where we give classes more regularly, where really we teach and we help people to develop their their skills, you know, their out body experience skills. Yeah. Now, aside from that, we also go to other cities and we offer these classes on a more temporary basis. This is the case of the San Francisco Bay Area. Here in the US is the case of Boston, of Philadelphia, of Gainesville, of Houston, etc., etc., etc. In Europe is the case of Finland, of Switzerland, of Cyprus. In Asia is the case of Tokyo, of Hong Kong, of Macau. In close to Australia, that's the case of New Zealand. And really, all of these. We just mentioned it just for you to get an idea of the size of the institution. That it's not just one individual, you know, who, who had certain experiences, but really in the entire world, we must be about three to 500 researchers dedicated to the study of all of these topics. Most of my colleagues are doctors, certainly. Most of them are doctors and psychologists. This is the, the biggest majority, the biggest percentage. But aside from that, there are scientists of all kinds physicists, chemists, biologists, sociologists, etc., etc., etc. And also, something that I always like to point out is there is a smaller percentage of my colleagues that doesn't necessarily have a college degree, but they have a lot of experience with this phenomenon and they contribute with all of this experience. And this, of course, is more than welcome, by all means. So this to give you a little bit of an idea of the, of the IAC. Our headquarters are actually in Portugal, where we have sort of like a university campus of sorts, and this is, you know, like the architectural layout of the of the piece of land. This is not all because it continues 
towards each side actually quite a bit. And aside from several administrative buildings, maybe the most interesting thing for participants at the beginning are these little half spheres that you see here, that they are individual laboratories for producing different paranormal phenomena. So people go into those little half spheres that you see there, and they produce a specific energetic phenomena or an out-of-body experience. This actually happens a little bit more in the one in the middle, whose name is Projectarium, or the specialized lab for producing projections outside the body. Astral travel, unfolding, mystic voyage, I don't know what might be the name that might be more, more common to you. So that happens in this lab. The way this lab looks, let me show you an actual picture of it. It's a, it's a sphere. This one specifically is a sphere because it continues underneath the ground. It is empty inside. There is a plank, a plank in the middle, and there is a bed there. And there are several architectural optimizations, but especially energetic optimizations that facilitate so that leaving the body is a little bit easier. And then as you know, as it has been open already for many years, and thousands of experiments have already been done, there we are, us, the researchers, trying to understand everything about the phenomenon. For example, is it easier, in terms of variables, is it easier for older people to have out-of-body experiences or for younger people? Is it easier for men or for women? If we took a medication or a vitamin or a supplement, did that specific you know, substance, does it help or does it hinder? What was the technique that the person used? So as to try to understand you know, which ones are a little bit more effective. So everything that pertains to the ability, all the variables that we can you know, compute, let's put it this way, we try, of course, to understand them better as these you know, um, experiences keep on accumulating, as these experiments keep on accumulating. And part of this information is what we use in our presentations, on our classes, really, all over the world. So here at the beginning, I wanted to at least put this up just for you to get at least one idea of research, of the, of the research that we do. So, you know, this is the, the campus, and this is um, very much where a lot of the, of the research happens. Now, another thing that we always like to start out with, in any language, in any country, in any activity, we always begin with this. Don't believe in anything, not even in what we are saying here. But experiment, have your own experiences. And really, we say this for many reasons. First of all, the obvious, we are not an institution that is based on belief. Um, we don't think that we have all the answers or are the owners of the truth. No, not at all. We just simply have done a lot of homework, compiled a lot of information, and you know, we try to pass this on to interested individuals, of course. But the other interesting thing about this phrase is that especially when we deal with out-of-body experiences, and with near-death experiences as well, you know how sometimes when you mention this to other individuals, this falls in their mind, it falls into the category of should I believe this person or should I not believe this person? Right in the mind of the person who is listening to this. So we say don't believe, certainly don't believe. Because with regards to the out-of-body experience, certainly you can experience this. And we value the experience quite a bit because the moment that the person has the experience on its own, you know, this, this goes from the the belief category into the certainty category. Now the person is sure that these types of things happen. Let me see if I can explain this a little bit better. Sometimes I live in Los Angeles. I am, you know, I bump into a student in the supermarket and sometimes they pull me there by the eggs, I guess a less formal setting according to them. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, they have already taken the classes and everything and they are asking me there, you know, in, the, in that aisle, do you really believe in this stuff? They even say it a little quieter. Um, my default answer is no, I don't believe in this, but you're gonna see why this makes sense. What happens is that the question, do you believe in this, is so strange to me, and it's strange for the following reason, because we have sort of like, in our mind, you know, the category of the things that we believe in, and then the category of the things that we are sure of. So if I were to ask you right now, you're going to see what I mean by the strangeness of the question. If I were to ask you right now, do you believe in your hand? Why is this question so strange? Even if we say yes, yes, I believe in my hand, it's still strange, right? 
And it's very strange because our hand is a reality. It's something that we have, that we use, and you know, we experience every day, and it has nothing to do with the category of belief, even if the answer is affirmative. So it's more part of the category of a certainty. So when they ask me, do you believe in out-of-body experiences, I also get this short circuit that you just got here with the other question. And my answer is no, I, I don't believe in this. I am sure about them. But I am sure about them because I've had them. So one of the things that we do, especially in the, in the classes, you know, is we try to emphasize you know, the person developing and having its own experiences so that they don't have these dilemmas you know, in, internally, but so that they have already experienced it, maybe not necessarily once, but twice, three times, or however many times is, is necessary for them, and then this settles in their mind. And now they're not necessarily thinking about whether it is or it isn't, but they're actually thinking about the next step. How do I take advantage of this ability for you know, personal growth, spiritual development, or whatever you know, um, use the person wants to you know, apply it to? Yeah? So by all means, certainly, keep this in mind. Also, we say this because we don't pull any rabbits out of the hat, if you understand what I mean. You know, we're not going to say something just because, uh, just to all people, or just because it's grandiose. So everything that we say already has a lot of background information. And at the end, by the way, of this uh, presentation, I want to try to give you a very good overview of everything that we study. And at the end, I'm going to leave there a good 20 minutes for Q&A, and feel free to ask whatever you want, okay, about the phenomena, about the ability, etc., etc., etc. So definitely part of our intention also is to answer questions so that everything is clear there at the end. Okay? So keep this, keep this here in mind. Let me, since we are here in the official presentations, I guess, first present to you this, the two subjects, the two main subjects with which we deal. The first one is this small pocket book, as I joke sometimes. So this is the textbook of the subject project theology, the study of the out-of-body experiences, or projections outside the body. You can see that it's quite the, the volume. The author, Dr. Vieira, is a, a good friend, a colleague. He's a doctor, he's an odontologist. Afterwards, feel free to come and browse it, you know, no, no problem. Um, and he had out of body experiences since he was nine, I believe, and he realized something that probably we all realize, that most religions, most cultures, most philosophies, most schools of thought, they know a little bit about the out of body experience. Some they know a little bit more, some they have just heard of it and have a few techniques, etc. So he decided to spend about 20, 30 years of his life going about the world, collecting pieces of the puzzle, if you will, to try to fit the puzzle, to try to understand much better, you know, how this phenomenon works. And this is the culmination of about 20, 30 years of his life. So the, um, the, the story of the out of body experience or project theology here basically deals with what are the techniques for living the body? Why is it easier for certain people to live the body? Once we leave the body, what do we see? Where do we go? What is this idea, for example, of dimensions or parallel worlds or alternative planes of existences that we describe when we have out-of-body experiences? That people who have near-death experiences, they find themselves in these situations as well. Who are the individuals that meet you in a near-death experience or in an out-of-body experience? How do you communicate? Why are they there? So everything that pertains to the ability to the phenomenon, let's put it this way, is project theology. This is, you know, the first, the first subject there. Now, let's see if I can do this and not drop anything. <laughs> They're a little heavy, these books. The second one here is only in Portuguese, and I don't know how many of you can read this anyway from the distance, but the second subject is conscientiology. Conscientiology studies the consciousness where the name of the institution comes from. International Academy of Consciousness. What we mean by consciousness is not so much only awareness, but we use the term the consciousness to refer to our essence, to the intelligent principle that we are independent of the physical body. So if somebody were to ask you on the street, what are we in essence? 
probably the most common names that we would use to describe ourselves are soul or spirit, right? So independent of the physical body, what are we? Maybe if somebody has read a little bit more about, how can I say, topics related to New Age, they might say energy. Now, lately, I've started to hear that a little bit more. But for us, then, you know, basically a synonym or another name would be the consciousness, and the story of the consciousness is conscientiology. So, it's the story of the soul, it's the story of the spirit. What happens is that having out-of-body experiences allows us to observe the soul, the spirit, the consciousness from a very different perspective than the physical one that we have here right now. And this, of course, also happens in near-death experiences, naturally. If somebody has a near-death experience and finds a relative of theirs that have already passed away, you know, they realize they are existing there, they are doing other things, they are fine, they haven't lost them, we are connected, etc., etc., etc. So now we know something about that person beyond the physical death. And the same thing occurs with the out-of-body experiences. You leave the body and the out-of-body experience allows you to observe, maybe this phrase um, might leave the idea a little bit clearer, allows you, to, allows you to observe souls in the wild, in their natural habitat. <laughs> well, at this moment, we are observing souls, of course, but we are all sort of like in our, in our physical cage, if I can make this example work, yeah? So, notice how, uh, because we have been using this physical body and we have had physical observations already for many, many decades, we understand the physical reality very well. So we understand about, you know, geographical divisions, about money, about our FICO score, about relationships, and, you know, we understand this entire reality. Great, excellent. Now, the moment that we have out-of-body experiences, we're able to observe that other reality and join the non-physical perspectives to the physical perspectives, helping us to get a much global understanding of who we are. Yeah? Let me see if I can go a little bit more simpler and more detailed, so that this is, this is a little bit clear. I don't know, by the way, what is the extent of your out-of-body experiences. I know that several people here already had near-death experiences, and this, is, this helps, certainly, because this is no longer just a theory. But if you have had out-of-body experiences as well, this example will make even more sense. But Let's assume that all of us, we have an out-of-body experience tonight. And let's say that we don't go too far. I, I was actually noticing that John has several books on out-of-body experiences there on the table. I don't know how many of you probably have, have read this. Some of them are the classics of the out-of-body experience. Sylvan Muldoon, Robert Monroe, etc., etc. Now, uh, let's assume that we all have an out-of-body experience, and let's say that we don't go too far. I say this because probably some of you might have had a ways in which you leave the body and you go visit, for example, a relative on the East Coast or in Europe or even further out, something more or less. Let me see if I have this here. Well, my book sort of like summarized this too for those that, uh, you know, you require a certain amount of courage to read all of this. So, so there is a simpler way, which is, you know, this book, of course, and afterwards I can talk about it and, and feel free to browse it. But let me explain here a little bit better conscientiality. So you can go very far. You can actually have these types of experiences that we call of exoprojections outside of the planet. Interestingly enough, these types of experiences are not that difficult. Um, something that happens many times on the first out of body experiences because we don't have a lot of control, is that sometimes we look while we are outside a little bit like a baby that is starting to give his first steps and they, they don't have control over their legs. So something that many people describe is many times on one of the first OBEs that they find themselves being pulled outside their body and at a very great speed they find themselves in a few seconds, you know, out in space without a lot of control. So this is actually not that strange or not that uncommon. My intention really by putting it here is just to say that it is feasible, it is doable. And I know that this is, you know, goes well, well beyond, you know, the monotony of the physical life, right? But let's assume 
just for the purposes of understanding here conscientiology better, that all of us, we have an out-of-body experience and we don't go that far. But that we leave the body and we are, to simplify, let's say that we stay within our house, or even simpler, let's say we stay within our bedroom. Okay, so a much simpler type of out-of-body experience. So what are the consequences of this? What happens, you know, if we find ourselves tonight in this condition? The first thing that is going to occur is that we're going to realize that if we are in a classical, typical out-of-body experience, we are aware, we are conscious, we are fully lucid, and that this is not a dream. And this is actually a very common question on, the, you know, on these initial introductions or, or lectures. What is the difference between the dream and an out-of-body experience? The main difference is the level of awareness. Really, the out-of-body experience, when we are, again, in a classical, typical OBE, is similar or basically exactly the same as being awake. So if I were to ask you right now, sort of like relying on your own experience, at this moment, are we aware of this presentation? Are we awake of this presentation? Or are we dreaming it? And I know, because of your experience, right, I, I hope that all of you are going to tell me that you are awake. Yeah, sometimes I say it takes me half an hour to put people to sleep. So I know at this moment you know you are aware, you know you are awake. Yeah, but all, all joking aside, you know what being awake feels like and you know what sleeping feels like. And if you compare this situation right now with these two, you, rea you realize I am aware. And the same thing happens outside the body. You are aware, you have all of your memories, all of your mental faculties, you can reason, you can do math. Um, think even about your memory, for example. How many times in our dreams have we remembered our address, our phone number? Usually never, but in an out-of-body experience, you remember it very well. You remember everything. It's you, you know, the same personality with the same good jokes and bad jokes. It's you. <laughs> it's exactly you. Now, you are there about your room, you know, floating with all of this awareness. Maybe you have the opportunity to turn around and to look at your physical body lying in bed, sleeping. I don't know how many of you have already had this experience. Something that actually is commonly described on the near-death experiences, right? One of the first things is that the person is pulled outside its body and it's seen, the person is uh, sees there its physical body and the nurses and the lifeguards or somebody working on them. Of course, in the out-of-body experience, the person is not in a hospital normally, they didn't pass away, so there are no doctors around. But again, if you haven't had the experience of this, I don't know if at this moment you can imagine what your reaction will be the first time that you are outside your body, looking at your physical body in bed, sleeping. This is interesting because this is another one of these moments that helps us so that, um, what is the expression in English, like, so that the quarter drops and we really, it really hits us in the practice, not so much in the, in the theory, but in the practice, I am really more than my physical body. And it's something that, of course, we know in, in you know, up here in a more theoretical sense, but sometimes it's almost as if we forget. Sometimes I say we are so complex. I am so complex, let me not put all of you in this bag, but sometimes we are so complex that even though we know we are more than the physical body, every day we act as if we are only this physical body. And, th and this is interesting. So this type of uh, phenomena shows us I am much more than just simply my physical body. Let me actually put myself as an example so that I guess the focus falls on me. I have done this many times. I actually started having out of body experiences since I was 12. When I was 12, I didn't know that there was a name for them, that there were techniques, that other people do them, did them, if there were books, etc., etc. I just had them and had very few actually through my, through my teenage years, maybe one a year or so. It wasn't until I was 17 that I read the first book on out of body experiences and I realized that, you know, I could induce it or I could learn to induce it. So, you probably, some of you probably heard about that book. It was called um, The Third Eye by Lobsan Ramba. So he was very famous back in the, I don't know if very famous, but famous, <laughs> back in the 70s and 80s, right? Now, 
In any case, I have done this. I can be outside my body, I can be there looking at my physical body in bed, lying, sleeping, and I realize, you know, I am more than the physical body. And then the first idea that can come to my mind, or that I can explore here as I am looking at this, is the idea of identity. What I mean to say is, my physical body has a name. Mine happens to be Luis Minero, and I identify myself with this name, just like all of us, you know, we identify ourselves with our names. I also have a network of relationships, you know, sister, mother, father, you know, just like all of you, we also identify ourselves with this network of relationships. But in this very simple out-of-body experience, I realize I am much more than just simply Luis Minero. So, and much more than just simply the network of relationships that define Luis Minero. So if I am a soul, if I am a consciousness that goes beyond just simply the physical name, if I am not what I have been used to all my life, then who am I as a soul? Because as a soul, as a spirit, as a consciousness, I was never Luis Minero. And then I realized that in an out-of-body experience, I can go and I can gather information that is going to help me to understand much better who am I as a soul. Because as a physical being, I know it. But this is just a fraction of what I am. This is not everything that I am, and it never was really. Yeah? Now, I am looking there at the physical body, and I also realized that I, as a soul and as a spirit, I existed before the physical body was formed. So a very specific question that I could ask is, two years before I was born, where was I? The soul already existed, but the physical tool didn't. So I was somewhere in these planes, you know, astral plane, parallel plane, uh, dimensions, alternative planes of existence, whatever name you want to give it. I was somewhere in these dimensions, but specifically where? And then I realized that in an out-of-body experience, I can go explore where I was, and also this is going to help me to understand this whole question of the philosophy. Where do I come from? What do we normally answer when people ask us, where do we come from? I usually say Florida, just because that's where I spent most of my life. I hope no souls come from Florida. <laughs> really, I do. But I usually say Florida, and probably when they're asking me this, the person what is looking for is for a physical reference, of course. If I tell them I come from Dimension X, now they're going to think that you're cuckoo, see? But this is not so much so that I can tell somebody else an answer, but it's more than anything so that I can understand myself, you know, deeper, of course. Now, notice that the same thing, by the way, works towards the future. First of all, I am there looking at my physical body. I realize that I'm existing independently of the physical body. Furthermore, by the way, for those of you that might be more interested about, you know, on the more conventional scientific research, furthermore, the moment that I am looking there at my physical body, I realize that my physical brain, who at this moment science thinks that is the one that produces consciousness, and this is what we are, in this very simple out of party experience, I realize I am outside the brain. And yet, here I am existing independently of the brain with all of my memories, with all of my abilities, and furthermore, when this physical body deactivates and passes away, I will continue existing with all of my abilities and with all of my memories and with all of my discernment. So maybe conventional science needs to update a few things here. Because in this very simple experience, I realized this. And, I, and furthermore, I can realize it every night. You, you, you see what I mean?